I was speaking to a friend of mine the other day and she's going to her first ever viewing. How exciting is that? I'm actually quite jealous because the first time is always going to be the most exciting and uh, she's taking her first step on the property ladder as well and she asked for my advice. So of course I whip out my uh, 13 point checklist that I have and it made me think well actually this is probably quite a helpful thing to blog about. So today my 13 points to look out for when you're viewing a house. Number one is all about preparation. Preparation. Know your particulars, and by that I don't mean your inside leg measurement. So you need to really study the details that the estate agent has given you so that when you get there you're armed with all the questions you need to ask. And don't let the estate agent shy away from answering any of them or give the politicians answer. They need to answer every single question clearly, if not on the day, then in following days. Number two, do a drive-by. And by this I mean ahead of the appointment, have a little wander around the the neighborhood, check out how far it really is from the station and what kind of feeling you get from walking up and down the road and round the block. Um, when you get to the viewing, you may find that certain things have been tidied up and a certain neighbors even quietened down. So you really want to be getting a true picture of how it's going to be if you do eventually move in there. Now, it may be that there's a dispute with a neighbor and legally the uh, vendor is required to uh, announce that, but of course, some things might slip through. So you're gonna get a better picture from say Doris up the road who knows everything about everybody than you will from asking the estate agent or, or even the vendor to be honest. Number three. You need to have a poker face. Now, this is something I learned when I was a kid, my parents taught me, that when we go to this house, you're not allowed to show any excitement. And of course, me being uh, a wannabe actress as a child and probably pretty precocious, I particularly enjoyed this part of it. So basically, when you go to a place, you don't wanna show the excitement if it's really thrilling you. On the flip side, you don't want to be really negative because of course you've got to negotiate with these people, particularly if it's the vendor that's there as well. Number four, check for damp. Now, it's usually pretty obvious by the smell, but uh, you may also notice some water staining on walls, perhaps some bubbling and flaking paint or wallpaper. Now there's good and not so good no, there's good, no, there's bad and not so bad damp when it comes to a, a property. So, for example, if it's just because there's a, some kind of gutter broken and, and the water's coming down the wall, yes, it could be costly to fix, but it's certainly not anywhere near as bad as rising damp. Number five, is it a crack den? And by that, I mean, what are the cracks like? Hairline cracks, fine, that's pretty normal. But if you've got some much bigger cracks, it could uh, indicate that there's subsidence issues and you may want to get a structural survey. Number six. So, does it suit your needs? And by that I mean, say for example, you have a life-size porcelain figure of Timmy Mallet um, that you like to keep in your kitchen. Will he fit there? So you have to think about the kind of furniture that you have and also the areas in particular that you spend most of your time so you need that extra bit of space. Number seven. See through the smoke and mirrors. Now, one of my other blogs, I showed you how to uh, upcycle mirrors and also the importance of having mirrors in strategic places. So they can be your friend, but they can also be your foe and really mislead you when you go to see a place. Also, clever lighting can make a difference. Number eight, what about the roof? If you can get up there, fantastic. You wanna see from underneath because that really gives you a lot more information. But also, from outside, really spend time looking at that roof. Whether it's tiled or flat roof, it's uh, got a shelf life and of course it can be very expensive to fix. As can number nine, the windows. That was my biggest single expense when doing my current house because all the windows were rubbish so I had to uh, replace them with double glazing. Number 10, spark up a conversation about the electrics but don't necessarily believe what you hear. You need to see proof. So you want certificates, have a look at the sockets. If they're old, then the wiring is most certainly old. However, you can obviously change socket covers without doing the rewiring. So best to look at the fuse box. That will usually tell you the age of the wiring, whether it needs to be done. And of course then, if you need to rewire the place, then there are gonna be decorating costs and all this needs to be taken into account with the price of the house as does the plumbing number 11. 
So turn all the taps on, flush all the toilets, just as a guide, clunking and knocking noises, not good. Um, but you want to know what the water power is like as well, although don't let that necessarily put you off a house as you can get things like the Eco Camel which pushes air through instead and that gives you that extra power for the shower. But you need to know what state the plumbing is in. Number 12, what's the potential? Now obviously you need to be aware of the now, but what is the could be as well? So the horrible brown carpets and wood chip wallpaper. Um, actually, I get very excited when I see that because I know there's so much that I can do to that place to make it look better. But also, what about room for expansion as well? Um, what else has been done in the road? Have there been loft conversions or extensions out the back? Um, because if they've already set the precedent where planning is concerned, it's going to be easier for you to do it. Can you create parking spaces in front as well? That's going to add a huge amount of value but also convenience. Number 13, and this one just makes me laugh, the fact that being number 13 can reduce the price of a place quite significantly. I lived at number 13 once, I had a ball. But seriously, it could really go in your favour if you're not superstitious. If you are, just don't use the number 13 and give the house a name instead. Um, but think about when you're coming to resell, are there any little quirky things like that that might put someone off but not you? Because that could affect the price and therefore you're onto a winner. So that is my checklist of 13. Now, of course, there's no point in having lots of ticks, it being perfect on paper, but just not feeling right. So go with your gut. When you walk through that door, does it feel like the kind of place that you could live in? Once you've got new carpet and maybe a lick of paint, because it's so important that you feel comfortable there. But also make sure that you print off this checklist because until you've ticked every single one of those points, you're not ready to buy. And feel free to make a new nuisance of yourself and go back as many times as you need. You're going to be spending hundreds of thousands of pounds and you can't make that decision on one 30-minute visit. And that's it for today. I'll see you next time.